welcome back i was describing to you how at present calvary is it is in the basilica of the holy sepulcher and well preserved although the sides are removed the center piece is there intact and the spot where the three crosses were fixed are there we it is visible the central one where jesus cross was fixed is now covered with a silver disc whereas the other two with black marble by the side of these holes is the crack the rock that was rent with that earthquake at the time of jesus death is there and that crack is visible on the top when you are in the church it is visible also if you go down go to the cave of adam in order to see the cave of adam you have to go down to the floor of the basilica and come round and then you can see the cave of adam where the christians used to stand and say that little prayer and the crack that caused that was caused by the earthquake is still there calvary itself is only 15 feet high from the floor of the basilica but then you have to go up the steps and it is rather narrow only few can go at a time the beauty is calvary is there and now they have fixed a glass window through which you can see the original rock of calvary you cannot touch it because people will take away pieces and so they don't allow you to touch it but you can see that rock the original piece is still there visible through a glass window that the calvary is still so beautifully preserved is something of a wonder it all happened as i already explained because hadrian out of malis preserved it malis because he didn't want the christians to come there and worship he didn't want christianity to grow but in that process he managed unknowingly unwittingly managed to preserve all that so much regarding calvary a few other details i have given in the previous talk and even now lot of other things are available but the most important one that this whole sacred place is beautifully preserved the next sacred site is the tomb itself the tomb was almost in a dilapidated state it was there was the risk of crumbling for the last 200 years it was not opened nothing was done even to preserve or strengthen all that happened in the last 9 months you might have read in the papers in the english papers that that renovation was completed just two days back on the 20th of march and the archbishop of uh, jerusalem together with the representative of the holy father blessed it and is opened to the public they took 9 years to do the renovation work and they had about 50 experts all from the national technical university of athens who are experts in this kind of construction and renovation they spent 9 months working mainly at night so that there is no disturbance for the pilgrims but everything is completed and now the tomb though its previous shape is changed the original tomb is there it is covered with another what we call an edicule a small uh, structure covering the whole uh, st- uh, structure of the 
tomb and it's a beautiful one you might have seen the pictures or it will be available in uh, youtube and all that download it and see how they have done this wonderful work what i would like to emphasize is the tomb which was the center of christian faith because jesus body was in that tomb for three days and then he rose to new life which gave new life to christianity itself and that tomb is now available to the pilgrims you can enter there and you can even touch the stone on which jesus body lay for three days i have already very briefly described to you the structure of the tomb which is more or less common for all the fairly rich jews their tombs are a two room uh, tomb the first one called the vestibule is a small one where about 15 people can stand that is for the immediate family whereas the tomb itself is another small room which will be hardly 7 feet by 6 feet and there the body is simply put on a slab it is placed on that slab naturally wrapped uh, with the perfumes and all that wrapped in linen all that is in the bible if you read st john's description everything is there and then that body is kept on the on that slab what is interesting is that slab is in jesus tomb that slab is along the wall the whole tomb is hewn out of the rock the rock which is a continuation of calvary earlier i described how calvary is it is a huge rock actually on one side let us say on the left hand side it is quite high and then it slopes down and then it rises again and it is this last part that is called calvary which is a public property whereas the other one is a private property of joseph of arimathea in that property he had his tomb already hewn out of that rock prepared for him and that is where jesus was buried notice that the jewish burial in this type of tomb is never covered with mud they just keep the body on that slab and then come out to the vestibule that bigger room and then come out and there a round stone is rolled to close the whole tomb so otherwise nothing is put on the body all the jewish uh, burials are like this if it is a tomb like this for example lazarus is also is a two chamber uh, tomb lazarus could easily come out from there there is no mud covering the body and all that Jesus told him Lazarus come and he came that is possible because nothing is there covering the body and Jesus body also was like that what is really touching moving is that we can enter that tomb through the vestibule through the inner room and in the inner room is a slab on which Jesus body was laid and we can touch it we can kiss it they allow you but usually they allow five or six people at one, one time because too many cannot go in and between that slab on which the body was laid and the wall there is only a narrow passage so as you go in the same way you have to come back no other i um, mean no space for more people but that it is still there and that we can even touch and say a little prayer there is something that is so moving when we stand there 
touch that stone and say prayer jesus your body lay here one day i also will be laid in a tomb one day like you i too must rise enable me lord to rise with a new life to eternal life to be with you forever and that prayer will be really something so moving for all of you keep this in mind and let your easter celebration your lenten observance be meaningful with all these we will have a break again we will see next week with the next episode i will continue with the same similar explanations maybe i will move into the israelite way of sacrifices in the temple may god bless you